Hello and welcome to another episode of Microsoft Fabric. And in today's video, we are going to discuss recently released feature of calculated table and calculated column. Yes, you have heard right. DAX calculated table and DAX calculated column has made its way into the Microsoft Fabric semantic model. Today, we are going to explore what all we can do using these two features. So let's jump on to the app.powerbi.com to start our today's journey. So I'm here on app.powerbi.com and from here I'm going to open my workspace GA10 Fabric. GA10 Fabric is the workspace if you remember some time back we have created a custom semantic model on top of our warehouse WH01 when I've shown you the calculation group video. You can go into the series and find out the calculation group video. And if I click on this calculation group, it will open the calculation group semantic model. And after that, I can click on open data model to open my data model. In this data model, you can already see that I've created couple of calculation groups. And these are the calculation group which I've shown you in the past. This model also contains a date table, geography table, item table, customer table, everything joined to my sales table. Now, if you want to look at the model, I can click on the all tables and you can see my model, which is my typical sales model joining this table with item, customer, geography and date table. As you might have already noticed when I came here, new column and new table are enabled now. What all places we can create new column and new table we have to explore. If I click on the sales table, the table which is coming from my warehouse to this custom semantic model, you see that I am not getting the option for new column. So as of now, you can't create a new calculated column, the DAX calculated column on a table which is coming from direct lake. But if I click on calculation group, you see that the new column option is enabled here. And the reason for that is the table which is created in the semantic model, we will be able to add new calculated column here. Similarly, everywhere when I'm clicking, it is showing me new table option and I should be able to create a new table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all try, can I create a new table by getting the data from the direct lake tables, which are already existing like item sales, geography, date and customer table. So let me try to do the first attempt to create a new table using the existing table from the direct lake mode. I clicked on the new table and the new table is opening up. Let me try to create a table summary. And this table I want to create using summarize. I want to give my central table sales, comma, item brand. When I give the central table inside my summarize, I can use the dimension tables which are joined from one side to many side, many side means the sales here in the group by. And then I can have expression, every expression I need to give a name before. For group buys, I don't need a renaming. So table group buys name and expression pairs. I can give any number of group buys, but right now I only wanted to group the data for item brand. So let me give only one group buy. The next one is I want sales and this sales is nothing by my major net. And let me close this and press enter. I can also press a commit button, but it is saying you cannot use calculated table to reference direct link table. The, the model include following calculated table, which is not supported. Please remove the calculated table. So as of now, I will not be able to use the direct lake tables or tables which are in direct lake mode. I will not be able to use those. So then how I'm going to create a table and what table I can create. Well, I have an answer for that. So what we are going to do here is, if you remember many time I have shown you my DAX date table and I'm going to bring in the code for that DAX date table. So let me bring in code for my DAX date table and paste it here. And this is my date table. And because I already have a date table in the model, let me call it date IND. This is I usually use for independent, but in this case, I'm going to join it. So this table contains a code which is having the calendar which is starting from static dates and ending on static days from 2018 to 2021. And then I have year column, month number column, quarter number column and everything. And remember that I am using the add columns of DAX to add the columns. It means that not only I'm going to create a table, but I'm also going to add the columns to that table using the add columns. So what I'm doing here is I'm not clicking on this new column and creating a new column. I am just using the add column function of DAX to add the columns. There is an incorrect syntax of where. 
so I left out this where and commit this so there was a mistake in the code I corrected it and now yes you got the date independent table date independent table is ready but we are not going to use it as an independent table as I already explained to you I will go to the day out one where only sales table is lying I'm going to drag this date table and I'm going to perform a join with the sales date I take my sales date from the sales table drag it on the date of date independent table it is suggesting me many to one single directional join and I'm going to save that what I can also do is I can mark this date table as a date table now to get that option let me right click on date independent and here I have an option marked as date table let me click on that right now it is showing me a pop-up where it is showing it is off let me enable that let me choose a date column and click on save once I save it it is going to mark it as a date table and that will ensure that I have continuous date in this date table and as you know that I am using DAX calculated table using the calendar it is always going to ensure that I have continuous dates those of you who are not aware of the calendar function my request is please go ahead and watch my previous videos in the beginner tutorial series or the full video how to create a calendar table and what is going to provide to us so let's get ahead now the date table is ready the calculated date table which is in the import mode is ready so if you click here and go to the advanced mode this is import mode if you look at the sales this is direct lake mode so one sales table which is in direct lake mode one date table which is in import mode ready to work together in the custom semantic model before i go ahead and create a report on this table i want to make sure that i month year sorting is correct so i'm going to click on the month year column and from there i'll go to the advanced and make sure my sorting is on month year sort i would like to ensure the same thing also on the previous date table which i have which is a direct lake more table that my month year is sorting on month year sort at both the places I'm able to ensure the same so we have one direct click date table we have one import mode date table and we have sales table joined with both the date tables time now has come let's create a new report click on the new report and let's get inside the new report and in this new report I'm going to create two visuals one on the month year of the import mode date table and I'm going to use my already existing major gross and gross is nothing but sum of gross amount you might have seen that in the past I have done it multiple times so my first visual is ready with the date import mode date table now let me bring in the month year from the date table which is the direct lake date table and also bring in the gross so both the direct lake date table and the import mode date table is able to give me the similar kind of results so now we have seen first thing we have seen one calculated table and that calculated table is not a simple table we have used add columns to add the columns and use it let me save this report as test calc table and columns and as i'm saving it for the first time it will go to the reading mode right now I don't want to add it because I want to go back to the model and take the next step I'm back on my model and in this model I will show you my two calculation groups now to showcase you what these calculation groups contain I will need to click on the model and inside the model when I go let me open this calculation group 2 and inside this calculation group 2 let me showcase you the calculation item so it contains my four major cogs discount gross and net and then I have this calculation group only calculation group which contains MTD, QTD and YTD these are something which I created in the past what I have done today before I recorded this video I also created LMTD by, by trailing the MTD by a month LQMTD let me rename it as LQTD which is nothing but trail by a quarter and LYTD which is nothing but trail by an year so all these things are now Trailing by a month, quarter and year. So I have two categories of major. What is One is current major and one is prior major. And if you might have remember in the past when I've done a calculation group video where I've shown you how can you create a custom column header or you can combine the columns inside the headers. That is where the place I've used the calculation group. Little bit older video in the Power BI advanced series where we have done that. So just a refresher, you can go back to that video. I'll also try to give the link into the description now to do that I need a calculated column 
and in that calculated column i want to differentiate between these two set of measures one as current and one as prior so now here on this table at least the calculation group table i am seeing that i can create new column so why don't we take an advantage and click on the new column and this new column i am going to call as group so let me create a new column group and in this group column i'll add the code if left I want to take out one character from the group calculation group and if that character first character is L it means equals to L it means it is the last means the previous period majors I can call it previous or last otherwise it is current period major and once I am done with the addition of this code let me press on commit so I have created a new calculated column I made it little bit large so that you can see control and middle button of mouse has given me that you can see that I've created a calculated column and this calculated column has become the part of this table let's go to the table and see do we see this yes we can see here in the calculation group we have a column group here now remember we have a data view inside our power bi desktop so when we initially created it we were able to see what data we contain but here we are not able to see so we just created this based on our previous learning. Now time has come again that we go back to the, our report and try to see if we can use this. So let me click back on the next tab where my report is open and let me go to the edit mode. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh this model. I've refreshed it. I go to the calculation group and I'm able to see the group column. Let me add a new page. And in this new page, I'm going to add a matrix visual. And inside this matrix visual, I am going to do first thing is I'm going to add brand on the rows and gross on the values. Now I will go ahead and play around with the calculation group. So let me add the calculation group. The moment I add this calculation group, it stops showing the data. The reason for that is this calculation group contain MTD, QTD and YTD. So unless there is a data on the last period, it is not going to show it. As my data is ending in 2020, it is not going to show me any data because my calendar is ending on 2021. This behavior I have already explained you in the past. I was using the original date table here. So from the original date table, I'm going to go back and bring in month here as a slicer. So let me bring in month year slicer. And in from month year slicer, let me select the month of July 2020. So I've selected month of July 2020. And as you can see, you can see the LMTD values and you can see the MTD values also. Now it means my calculation group is working. Now let time has come that we use the group. I'm going to drag this group on top of the column. Now please remember these values which you are seeing right now you can't trust unless the calculation group column itself is in the scope these calculation will not be correct so group column alone cannot be used so what we have to do is we have to expand this to make it work and now you can see the values which you are seeing previously now the previous has come on this side previously all the lmtds were before and mtds were afterward but you can see there is a column header grouping which we are getting and these are our LMTD values and MTD values. And to validate that, what you can do is you can, let me create a little bit of space. Let me drag the calculation group. And along with that, let me only bring in gross. And you can see these values. Our MTD value is 84, 753. And our LMTD value is 73902. And same way you can validate the other totals so what we have done now here is we are able to use time intelligence on calculation group and in that calculation group we have a calculated column which is giving us the column header grouping which we are able to use we have already seen how can we use a dex calculated table to group the data and we should be able to do the time intelligence also that is something i'm leaving it to you so now you have dex calculated table and column in Microsoft Fabric custom semantic model available with you and you can go ahead and try these out and do let me know what all use cases you are able to solve because of having these DEX calculated column and DEX calculated table inside the custom semantic model. So why don't you go ahead and try these out and do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular series. Thanks for watching this particular video. Thank you.